On video time now for the RS Andrews cool down. And if you guys can only see the moving parts we've had going on around here to kind of get all of this together so we could have this live conversation here right now. As I broke into the show, which I believe is a Dog Nation Daily First. Now, listen, we love being live. It's obviously very important to us. We've had some issues lately where that's not been as easy to do. So to create the show in the normal form, we've been doing some early morning pre-records, but we broke into programming. So essentially, if my ego wasn't already big enough, I am breaking in live to my own show to give an update on what's going on. But in all seriousness, there is new news to report. We talked about this as a possibility yesterday, and now it's a real thing. We'll bring in Connor Riley here. So Connor, as a part of our RS Andrews cool down, when I was looking at the news around, like say 10 a.m., it was Caleb Downs is going into the you know transfer portal as uh, one of our uh, audience members said he's fixing to go in. Well, now fixing to go in, seems like we're kind of moving into the Caleb Downs is actually in the transport portal that we don't know where he's going to go, or even if 100% sure he will leave Alabama, obviously has the option to return. But this is getting more real by the second. It certainly seems like a very strong possibility that Caleb Downs will have a new home for the 2024 season, and George would seem as likely a landing spot for him as anywhere. Is that your read on this situation right now? And that is correct. I think one thing to pay attention here, I know uh, Pete Thamel got a lot of pub, uh, Hayes Fawcett did as well. There was an account, Deuce Recruiting, uh, that I think is very important to follow here because Caleb's down, Caleb Down's father, I believe is, if I have this correct, the scouting director for that service. Uh, and that before, before Thamel, before Fawcett put anything out, said that Downs was planning to enter the transfer portal. Being Downs' his father is involved with that, I, I would take that to be a, a much more ironclad that he is intending to actually enter the transfer portal there. I will note... Uh, Great source, by the way. Listen, you, you know, you're a reporter. I, I don't think of myself that way. Everybody wants good sources. To have your own son as the source, I would say that pretty much trumps just about anything else you could possibly have there. Uh, I think that is a good way to do it. Now, I will point out, BA, you, know, you jumping on bandwagons, you creating bandwagons, it's not been a great run of late. Uh, you came up with Brocktober. Brock Bowers gets hurt in the month of October. Yeah. Go for three and 23. The one loss Georgia has, they lose by three in the mm. SEC championship game. We're trying not to relive this, by the way, but thank you. You go to the Georgia basketball game, and the only game that they have lost in their last 12 <laughs> is the one that you are you were <laughs> present for. I, I, I'm not saying, you know, you can't talk about it. You can't hype it up. You can't discuss it. Don't put any like double down on downs shirts out there. Don't put any downs ideas out there just yet. Let's make sure Georgia gets him on campus uh, whenever that might be, because I think one important thing to follow here in these next coming steps, it's one thing for Georgia to land Caleb downs, mm -hmm. but I do think a big part of this puzzle is when does he ultimately get to campus? Because I don't think it's an ironclad. He's going to show up and play right away and be able to go in spring because classes have already started at Alabama and Drop ad period has already ended at Georgia, meaning, you know, there are going to be some hoops that have to be gone through if Downs is to make it to Georgia right away and obviously go through spring practice. But having said all that, Caleb Downs is a good enough player to where he doesn't need to go through spring practice and he will be out there for that first game of the year against Clemson in a major role for Georgia. Yeah, to give you an idea how serious this is from a timeline standpoint, not only have classes already started at Alabama, all the students have already received their coloring books as well. So we're like, well, <laughs> come on, B. I have some friends that they went to Alabama, you know, briefly for part of undergrad and then they ultimately transferred to UGA. It is a fine institution to start your, uh, your college career at. So let me ask you a serious question because honestly, I, I don't know very much about this. Is there any way to get into Georgia this semester this late? Because we've been saying the entire time that, and I'm not saying this in a funny way, that it seems like we very rarely talk about academics anymore when it comes to player acquisitions, things like that. But when it comes to transfer portal, academics is still a very big deal because the acceptance into a new school and sort of having the 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 kind of we call it course credit to allow you to be accepted is still a pretty big deal. So given timelines, given things like that, is there a backdoor way to get a schedule that would allow Downs to go through spring practice? this late in the process at Georgia? The only thing that I know of would be President Jerry Moorhead sort of signing off on this. It would have to go all the way to the top there. Uh, it, it, you know, 
Now, from an SEC standpoint, I think if Georgia is okay with this and allows it, I think they would be with it as well. These are pretty unprecedented circumstances with Saban retiring when he did, and that obviously impacting when kids can go into the portal uh, and, and find new schools there. Uh, you know, it, it's worth noting that Kalen DeBoer wasn't hired until Friday afternoon of drop ad week. And that was always going to make things very difficult. If Downs wanted to have the time to make a fully informed decision on what he is going to do regarding his future there. So I, I think that's one of the big questions to follow there moving forward is can he a even withdraw from Alabama? And I do like to imagine that Alabama and schools involve will allow Downs to do this given the unprecedented nature of, of Saban's retirement and when this happened. But I think that is certainly one of the major storylines to follow. It's not just Downs, uh, where he goes to school next. I think when he goes to school and when he arrives there is another point to follow with this story. The other thing is, and you and I touched on this in some of the shows we've done, they all run together at this point, but um when Downs was a recruit, like it was just sort of a non-starter, the idea that he would come to UJ. In fact, it seems like Ohio State probably took the silver medal in the initial recruiting battle here. We all see the video. We all see the photo, if I'm allowed to say, dapping up, you know, Kirby kind of dapping up, you know, Caleb Downs. And a lot of us take that to be a signal that the relationship between Downs and George is perhaps different this time around compared to what it was before. I think something changed when Georgia missed out on Caleb okay. Downs the first time. Yeah. Uh, I, I think you've seen in the way Georgia went about winning the KJ Bolden recruitment. Uh, I, I think that Kirby Smart has sort of, and you can even look at this with how they've gone about recruiting the 2025 cycle in the state of Georgia. And, and I think one thing to monitor with, with recruiting, I know we focus so much on just the next class, but so much of this light work is done multiple years out and the reality is with Caleb Downs uh you know let's part of the elephant in the room Caleb Downs brother Josh Downs was a fantastic player at North Gwinnett High School uh went to North Carolina had a very strong season for the Indianapolis Colts uh Kirby Smart did not do a great job recruiting Josh Downs when Josh Downs was a high school prospect and I believe the 2018 cycle uh I'm doing some quick math there off the top of my head and understandably, I, I think the recruitment of Josh Downs maybe factored a little bit into how uh, Caleb Downs' recruitment went. But I think everyone has now seen the video. You point out the, the meme that uh, Lane Kiffin shared on your show today. Uh, Kirby Smart, and you saw this play out exactly with the K.J. Bolden recruitment where he first picks Florida State. And Kirby Smart stayed consistent. I have no doubts in my mind that Kirby Smart and his pitch with Caleb Downs stayed consistent in terms of going out and continuing to recruit him and saying, Hey, we believe this is the best place for you. And, and there's an interesting, you know, part of that video right after Kirby and down sort of embrace there at the end of the game, T Rob comes over and daps up Kirby. Uh, that, that, that screenshot has been taken and added as well here. So it is all sort of tied together. And I do think it speaks to the larger point of, of in recruiting nowadays, you need to continue to recruit them even when you don't pick their school initially uh, and I think this this Caleb Downs example is the most perfect one because Kirby has remained incredibly complimentary of Caleb Downs, gave a very glowing quote of Downs prior to the SEC championship game. And if Georgia ends up landing, landing him, yes, NIL is going to be a big reason why. Traveris Robinson is going to be a big reason why. But Kirby's consistency, I think, in his recruitment and the way he has talked and viewed Downs should be seen in that way as well. I think sometimes fans have an interesting reaction to stuff like this because there's no Georgia fan that wouldn't want Caleb Downs, as you correctly pointed out. This is one of the best players in the entire country, no matter where he plays in 2024. But there's this thought of, oh, gosh, what does this mean for Janela Guerra? Oh, gosh, what does this mean for K.J. Bolden? You know, it's such an embarrassment of riches for Georgia at the safety position in the event that Downs were to come here that – we're led to believe in this day and age of, you can't have that much talent in one position. No one's going to be okay with that, other than obviously Malachi Starks, who's playing and starting for anybody. But, you know, for Aguero and Bolden, how would they perhaps react to this? So I'll ask you, how do you think K.J. Bolden and Janelle Aguero perhaps view this if Downs does come in? I, I mean, Aguero is a little bit more interesting because the spring transfer portal window does exist. He is from the state of Massachusetts. You know, if he feels he's not going to have a chance to play this year, maybe he considers going transferring to Boston College and ACC school. But I think at the same point in time, Aguero and a lot of the kids that Georgia recruit, you know, 
Aguero knows that Georgia's going to be going after KJ Bolden in the, in the 2024 recruiting class. Uh, whoever the top safety is in the 2025 recruiting cycle, KJ Bolden probably knows Georgia's targeting him. Uh, you know, Georgia recruits at an elite level every year, and they're consistently bringing in great players. And, and so this shouldn't come as a surprise to them that they're going out and adding. They're adding a player like Caleb Downs. That's a little bit unprecedented. And so you maybe see that in a different light there. I think it's maybe, you know, Aguero is a guy who he'd been in the program for one year. Bolden hasn't even played a snap yet for Georgia. I think those guys are a little different. I, I would look maybe at some of the older players on the roster in terms of, you know, their potentially being an impact there. I know there's a lot of chatter about Ja'Cory Thomas and, and how he how he goes into this offseason, what expectations are for him. Landing downs might make him someone who is maybe more susceptible to entering the transfer portal. And I don't want to openly speculate on anyone entering, but I, I would look more if you're looking and you're worried about roster retention. Kirby Smart has so stressed, uh, you know, keeping those those guys for at least two to three years. I would look for guys that have been in the program longer to consider transferring first rather than some of those guys. And it's worth pointing out here as well. If those guys do want to transfer, they can't transfer within the SEC. That window has already opened and shut. And so those players will have to obviously wait until the April deadline and then look to play outside of the Southeastern Conference. And we were already perhaps thinking about Janelle Aguero as a candidate at the star position, right? Which is nickelback, you're on the field, the majority of the snaps anyway. Georgia plays far more frequently with five defensive backs than it does with four. From a size standpoint, I don't know if K.J. Bolden's quite big enough to do that. You probably have a better, uh, you know, feel of that than I do. But, you know, there is an opportunity for a safety-style player to be on the field as a nickelback, as a star. And in 2024, that's essentially a starter position anyway, just given how frequently Georgia shows that look. Yeah, Georgia plays, I would say nickel at this point in time is probably Georgia's base defensive package. And they play with six defensive deck, six, six defensive backs rather quite often there. So you know, you're gonna be able to find playing time if you're one of those better players. I think with Aguero in particular, you know, he was someone we thought at the beginning of the year would be able to push for playing time. Uh, he suffered an injury in the early part of the season, late part of the off se- er, uh, preseason. And I think we've seen now enough moving forward. If you have an injury in that August, early September window, it's the worst time of the year, I think, to have one if you're a young player because it just makes the catch-up that you have to make in season so much more difficult. There's a long lines of people. You know, Darnell Washington comes to mind, I think, entering his uh, his 2021 season where he has that early season injury, and it just never allowed him to have the season I think people thought he was capable of having. So I think with Aguero, it's going to be really interesting in seeing how he goes about and how committed he is to playing that star position. Uh, it is not necessarily like the most glamorous Glamorous. It doesn't, in my opinion, the way Georgia uses it translate to the NFL. And a nickelback in the NFL is very different from a nickelback in Georgia's system. But I think there's an opportunity for him to, to play right away. And there is a lot of overlap in terms of what safeties do there. And you look at Tyke Smith in the season that he had, he was an incredibly impactful defender for Georgia, an all-SEC level player, someone who was around the football a lot and able to make plays. And when you have guys like Starks and Downs potentially in the back end, I think if you were someone like Janelle Aguero, the ability to be around the line of scrimmage and be around the ball is a way for you to make a name for yourself when you have, in my opinion, the two best safeties in college football behind you. Let me do two things with you, Connor, and then we'll let you go. You've been kind to give us your time here today. Thing number one is this. The kind of the premise off the top of the show today was, it almost seems like to me, and I know this is a bold statement, but George is making moves right now that are perhaps even more aggressive of a pace than we've seen in the past, you know, helicopter landing at Mason Shorts High School shortly after his decommitment from Alabama. You've got uh, online predictions for Elijah Griffin coming to UGA. Uh, You all, the defensive back who was recently committed to Michigan, uh, he flips after taking the visit to Georgia. Now, the way the Caleb Downs thing is playing out, which we don't know how all this ends, but it certainly uh, is, is a possibility for Georgia here right now that this is the time of year in which we typically see Georgia being aggressive, but Connor, the pace with which they're moving the kind of headlines with which we're seeing right now, this feels a little bit different even for Georgia. Kirby, to me, looks like he is really swinging for the fences right now. I think Kirby Smart senses an opportunity in college football right now. Nick Saban, retired, no longer coaching, best to ever do it. Guy that just won the national championship at Michigan, Jim Harbaugh, making it pretty clear he's interested in becoming an NFL head coach, interviewed with the Atlanta Falcons uh, on, on Tuesday. There's an opportunity here as college football moves into a 12-team playoff, a, a new format, 
to sort of establish yourself as the premier program. And I think Kirby Smart senses that. I think he knows he has a, a team that can possibly win the national championship this year. And if we're able to continue to do that and win three and four, you parlay that into further sustained sustain success and show that you can continue to develop uh, in a, in recruit at an elite level and sort of keep the wheel moving, even in an era where you're just seeing more and more roster turnover than ever. And so I think that is sort of, you know, Ohio State is doing something similar in my mind with them, I think, really ponying up to bring back a lot of the guys that wouldn't have been necessarily been first round draft picks, would have been middle round draft picks in my mind. But he, uh, Ryan Day has done, I think, a very good job of getting those guys to come back for another year. I think Georgia and Ohio State, coincidentally, the two teams that are best position to land Caleb Downs uh, are making it very clear that we're pushing in, in in different ways, obviously, to establish ourselves as the top team in the sport right now, because I, and you touched on this in your show as well. I think Caleb DeVore is a very good coach. He can be a good coach at Alabama and still be a step back from where Nick Saban was. And, and I think, and, and I'm not the first port person to make this point, I think with Kalen DeBoer, you know, his on-field excellence as a coach and a game day manager, I think is going to try and help Alabama cover up for some of the roster losses that they're experiencing right now. And, and Bud Elliott made this point as well. Uh, Alabama maybe making the playoff this year was maybe the, one of the worst things to happen for them because of the timing of all this. And if Saban was already thinking of retiring, maybe he does that in December and, and that allows them to be more active in the portal themselves rather than what we have seen where people are just coming in and raiding their roster. Caleb Downs, I think, being the latest example of that. So the last thing then, and if you've got a final thought, I'll let you certainly have it. It certainly seems like for Alabama, it's hard to overstate how big of a disaster this would be, so much so that I still sort of wonder, does somebody swoop in at the last minute and put the kind of deal together that allows them to keep Downs? Because you want to talk about just taking a coach out at the knees right as he begins his coaching tenure. You know, to have the report from the ESPN reporter the other day be, hey, Downs wants to see the uh, the hires that DeBoer makes, and then he's going to decide to go in the portal. You know, DeBoer brings in a bunch of guys essentially no one knows, the Buffalo head coach, the South Alabama head coach. These are really not famous names. And to have Downs basically give you the sort of thumbs down on that and then move on, that would really be a tough blow for DeBoer right at the beginning of his career. Now, you didn't hire him to coach Caleb. Uh, Caleb Downs, you hired him to be coached in the next 10 years. But still, in terms of the momentum that you need to build right away, losing your best player like this in such a sort of cold and ruthless manner, it'd be a really, really tough look for DeBoer. Am I overstating that? It's going to be a lot for him to overcome. Now, he did that at Washington, turned them around in their first year, going from a four-win team to an 11-win team, winning the Alamo Bowl, beating Texas. But – I, I, with the timing of all of this, it's going to make it difficult. Now, Alabama still has a lot of talent. I, I think they're still a team capable of making the college football playoff next year. But in terms of being a, you know, a team that could win the college football playoff, team that is seen as a yearly contender, there's a lot of work to be done there. And, and you know, it, when Mike Krzyzewski walked away from Duke, he, he took a year-long victory lap. And, you know, was widely panned for it. I understand that. I get all that. And college basketball is obviously a very different sport than college football. I know Nick Saban, you know, felt he couldn't do this job to the best of his ability anymore. And, and you certainly get that and you understand that. I almost wonder if Alabama wishes that they could have talked him into doing a victory lap and making this upcoming 2024 season his sort of one last ride, do it as a year long celebration while allowing them to get their ducks in a row so that when it came time next off season to be active in the portal, to have a plan to pitch to recruits, they would be better adapted at doing that. Whether that means making Tommy Reese a sort of interim caretaker there and you try and hold the staff together or whatnot. I think you're seeing right now the plan of Saban's abrupt retirement and even bringing in a coach that got to a national championship game, Caleb DeBoer, uh, it's just going to make things very, very difficult for Alabama in the short term in, in terms of being a true championship elite level team. They're still going to be one of the best teams in the country. You know, I'll be interested in seeing what Jalen Milrow looks like in this system next year. But you look at where Alabama has been dominant for so long, especially in that secondary. I believe they've had five defensive starting, uh, excuse me, five defensive backs already enter the transfer portal. And they, of guys that were on the roster this year, they only have five defensive backs coming back. They're going to be very young in the secondary. 
I think it's going to be a really interesting year for Alabama. And, you know, Kalen DeBoer did a great job coaching this past year, in my mind, and getting Washington to where they did. You know, some of us saw foresight that he would be able to do so. Not everyone necessarily believed. If he's able to get Alabama into the playoff next year and have them as a team, you know, in the quarterfinals, semifinals, possibly, I actually think as we sit here today on January, when it looks like they're going to lose Caleb Downs, that somehow be an even more impressive job than getting a Washington team with no five-star talent to the national championship game. All right, a couple of things here to reset the news. We had talked about this as a possibility. Now it's reality. Caleb Downs, best player at Alabama, former five-star safety from Mill Creek High School, is in the transfer portal. George is expected to be in the mix here. We'll figure out what happens next on that. Connor, I want to give you the last word, but I also want to say you – to you to show what you know you kind of mocked me for my georgia basketball bandwagon status a little earlier road warriors last night in columbia going in their house of horrors uh coming away with a win against a team that only lost twice previously all year long uh the mike white uh bandwagon here will not be mocked we will not be mocked and I, you know i'm gonna give mike white a lot of credit here there was a lot of initial criticism when he was first hired because i think a lot of people they wanted the big home run swing. And in my mind, this program was in such a dumpster from when Tom Crean had it that the goal, I think, was to get to respectability, get to a place where, OK, making the NCAA tournament, you know, it, you might not be a team that is advancing the second weekend every year, but you're a team that if you have the right pieces around you and you have the right chips, you can you know, be a respectable program. You win a couple games you're not supposed to. You can find yourself in the NCAA tournament conversation. There's still obviously a long way to go with that. Georgia's got a tough SEC schedule. The best teams that they're going to play are still ahead of them. Obviously, Tennessee, one of them, a tough loss this past Saturday, which you were on hand for. But Mike White, I think he's done a really good job of identifying good players out of the transfer portal that can help cover some needs now while also finding the right players uh, in the recruiting rankings and building through the high school rankings. Silas Demery was a guy that played huge minutes for them last night and is, in my opinion, one of their better players. Uh, Blue Kane is a guy that's come off the bench for them and made big shots there. So he's building this up the right way. And I just want to caution here. I know everyone is excited about the idea of making the NCAA tournament for the first time since 2015. And that, for so many people, is the barometer of success. Are you making the NCAA tournament? Even if Georgia doesn't make the NCAA tournament, they could still very well go on to do so. You know, winning on the road in the SEC is tough, and they've already done that twice. Uh, So I think one of the things to watch going forward with this team is, are they making the steps towards being a respectable program? Are you winning your home games? Are you making things difficult on on the road? Mike White has already done that, considering in Tom Crean's last year, they won six total games and just one in the SEC. They're already three and one. This has been a very, very good job for Mike White already. And I'm interested in seeing how this Georgia team uses this strong start in SEC play to continue to build off that. They got a tough road game at Kentucky after that. But they have a fairly winnable stretch of games, LSU at Florida, Alabama at home coming up after that. So if they're able to continue this and continue to stack wins – if you're able to get to 10 SEC wins in conference, that's going to leave you in position where you're you're potentially waiting on Selection Sunday to find out whether or not you make it. And I think if you had told anyone a month ago that that was maybe a possibility for this Georgia team, I don't know how many people would have taken you seriously. So Mike White has already done the job in my mind that he was brought to Georgia to do. And if he continues to build in the right in the right way, as he has shown to do, they already have a five-star prospect in next year's class in Asa Newell. I think that's something that's very encouraging, not just for this season for Georgia basketball, but the long-term health of the program as well. How about a final thought on the down stuff? Anything that we haven't brought up that we should have? Yeah, I stress again, plans to enter the transfer portal is the verbiage being used right now, not officially in. Georgia fans know that with Daniel Harris and Julian Humphrey, that this is going to be a story to continue to watch here. Well, as you pointed out, they were the runner-up for downs in his initial recruitment there. but. If Georgia lands him, and I saw this on Twitter, uh, somebody had mentioned, you know, uh, this will be like a new age, Greg Blue and Thomas Davis at the safety position. No disrespect to Greg Blue and Thomas Davis, two very good players. Thomas Davis obviously went on a great NFL career. Greg Blue, one of the most beloved 2000s uh, Georgia Bulldogs. This might be not just the best safety combination in Georgia history. From an athleticism standpoint, from an NFL potential standpoint, this might be one of the great like safety tandems in the history of college football if you're able to get both Malachi Starks and Caleb Downs in the same secondary there. 
Uh, Caleb Downs is, in my opinion, the best player to enter the transfer portal this offseason. The fact that you get him for at least two more years, he has three years of eligibility left, makes him, in my mind, the clear number one player. Uh, this guy was the best freshman in the country last season and would, you know, again, George is already, in my mind, the number one, maybe the number two team in the country to start next season. You go out and add a player like Caleb Downs to your secondary and shore up your defense in the back end even further. Uh, you know, this is slowly morphing into, and I know it's a new year, but looking like a championship or bust season when you have guys like Starks and you have someone like Downs in your secondary. All right, Connor, great stuff. We appreciate that. I know you'll have plenty more coming at dognation.com and and the event this becomes official, I'm sure we'll have some more stuff to say at that point in time, too. So a lot of fun here right now. And I guess eventually there'll be an offseason. I don't quite know when that's going to take place, but uh, eventually it'll be here, maybe. Uh, but anyway, I appreciate you hopping on, being a part of this, and uh, we'll look forward to uh, catching up with you again very soon, too. I'm going to knock on wood here, but I think Caleb Downs could potentially be the last domino to fall until we get into the offseason. So we're close. We're there. And, you know, look, if and when it does happen, we'll come on and talk about it with you as we have today. Thank you so much, B.A. Yeah, good stuff there, Connor. And everybody here is part of our R.S. Andrews cool down, too. I know we've done a lot of comments here right now, but we're going to have to pop off here because we got a thousand things going on. So we'll be back live. We'll take more of your comments tomorrow. did just want to kind of give the news as we understood it because I know that we were live a little earlier. We weren't able to do that. So I'm going to take like one spin around the comment section just to say hello to folks and then – Obviously, we'll try to make this up to you a little bit after that. Caleb Janney says that Greg uh, Blue was a hit stick, and you better believe, going back to his time at UGA, he was no doubt that. And obviously, you know, Davis and Blue together brings back good memories. But as Connor said, from an NFL potential standpoint, if Downs were to come to Georgia, if this were to become real, pairing him with Malachi Starks is like not not only unlike anything that's ever happened at Georgia before, it is – quite possibly unlike anything that's ever happened in college football before. That is how significant that would be. Um, Over here on the YouTube side of things, uh, Foster Moss says, please don't speak on downs at all. Listen, I'm not bad luck like that. Now, the Brocktober thing did not go well. Admittedly, mistakes were made. Uh, You know, go for three and 23, many such cases, right? I mean, we've had, we've had our issues as of late, but over the course of years, We've also sort of hit on some things we spoke into existence as well. So in the case of Downs, we are treading lightly, but it certainly seems like this is going in a pretty good direction here for uh, UGA. We will absolutely say that. Uh, Let's see what else. (laughs) Oh, good to see Bo Molinari, one of our old buddies from the old days of SEC Country Live, checking in over here today. Bo, we're glad to have you over here. Uh, thanks for uh, showing up, Bo. I'm, I'm happy you're in here today. Um, Army Dog Charlie comes to my defense, by the way, saying that I am not, not bad luck because there's no such thing as a jinx. There you go, Army Dog. I appreciate appreciate that. It's great to hear from you. Uh, Spencer Clark says, one of the most exciting safeties, Trey Battle. Yeah, we actually caught up with Trey Battle not too long ago. That was a really enjoyable uh, thing. Uh, Battle's a great guy and uh, was you know great to catch up with him. Really enjoyed that. Um, Let's see what else. Philip Jordan Wells says that Brocktober felt like overkill. We're only saying that now because it just didn't work out very well. Uh, at the time, we were all in a good mood about that. Let's just let's go back and remember. Barry Watkins also coming to my defense as not being bad luck, so I certainly appreciate that. Um, Joel Moody, not afraid to get out in front of this. He says, I'm going to be the first one to say it. If we get Caleb Downs, it is over for everyone else. So there you go. Some of y'all want me to tread lightly. But Joel Moody has no such misgivings about putting himself out there on that. And I don't disagree with Joel about how much fun this would obviously be uh, for UGA. Quite an exciting time, as we discussed on today's show, with all of the major pursuits that Georgia has going on right now in both recruiting and still a big name out there left in the transfer portal. This could get very, very interesting. So stay close to Dog Nation. We're going to be watching it for you closely. And obviously, a big thanks to our friends at R.S. Andrews for making the R.S. Andrews cool down possible. R.S. Andrews, the one you turn to for your air conditioning, heating, plumbing, and electric needs. Showing up on time, doing the work that's promised. The price is promised. Very cold heating systems. They can get it tuned back up for you. Two factory fresh specs. It may only cost you $99. Make sure you find out more online at rsandrews.com. Okay, we're going to step away for now. Back tomorrow. Moving pieces all over the place. Uh, We're having a great time, though. So we'll talk to you then. Dog Nation Daily, presented by Great Impact Management.